of mainland Europe go along with that. So far, in London and Washington, few are talking of pulling the plug, but the next few months and the opinion polls will be crucial. In Afghanistan, nothing is straightforward. Even the depletion in the poppy crop may have been manipulated to boost the price of heroin. The optimists won't want to believe it, good news being so hard to find. Well, we're joined now by the Afghan ambassador to the UN, Zahir Tanin. Uh, let's start with the election ambassador. 2,000 allegations of fraud so far. We are getting close to the point, aren't we, where this election is going to have no credibility at all? Uh, well, uh, there are allegations. Uh, there have been uh, irregularities. And uh, as uh, it was said in your program, it can be numerous and serious, but to make a conclusion that it was a massive uh, fraud or uh, the credibility is lost, uh, I think uh, it's a judgment uh, before the complaint commissions come to say which of these alleg allegations are, were right or, or, or serious. But you'd accept that it's been a less successful election than the last one? Of course, uh, we had the difficulties. I think uh, the, the elections was... Uh, as uh, f uh, free to the extent possible when you when you see the the Taliban try to threat it it was fairly fair when you are aware of the difficulties in Afghanistan and it is transparent because the mechanisms international and national are in place to deal with the uh, complexities uh, you raised that word uh, transparent which brings us on to the question of corruption in your government according to transparency international the anti-corruption organization of 180 countries listed, yours is 176th. There are only three countries more corrupt than yours in the world by their reckoning. Uh, is that any cause for confidence? Uh, we, we know that corruption is an issue there. And we know that uh, it is, uh, Afghanistan is not about only the government of Afghanistan that, uh, that is in place. There is more than 62 countries that are part of reconstruction and military right. efforts there. From the $32 uh, billion dollars we received, for example, in the last eight years, the Afghan government is accountable for about six to seven billion dollars. So I think, but it is not about ignoring the fact that the corruption is one of the biggest issues that a government after the, this election should deal with it because it, this is, this is something we have to, we have to uh, uh, see it as a very serious problem. Well, let's look at another reason people are questioning support for your government, this law that President Karzai has brought in, which entitles a man to starve his wife if she denies him sex. You'd defend that too, would you? Uh, sorry, can you repeat this question? This is the law which President Karzai has supported, his government has supported, which entitles a man to starve his wife yes. if she denies him sex. Uh, you know, this, uh, this uh, law was uh, presented by a number of people in the parliament, and you know mm. how this parliament is, uh, is uh, heterogeneous. But it was President Karzai himself that who ordered to review it, and this law was reviewed, and, and, and in the, the new version which is in place is not the one you're talking about. You see, cumulatively, what people are beginning to say, looking at 300 foreign troops that have died in Afghanistan so far this year, they're just beginning to wonder why on earth these lives are being sacrificed. There is no need uh, for any life to be sacrificed. I think uh, uh, what we are there, the, the, the international community together, is a threat that is, is still there. And, and I think that the British government, uh, the, U the United States government, the international community made it very clear for everybody in their own countries that they are there mainly for their own interest. But at the same time, I think it, we are well aware that is the responsibility of the government of Afghanistan to help the international community to uh, uh, not to sacrifice the lives of their sons in Afghanistan. And I think the best way is to invest and, and, and uh, forming the new Afghan army and police. The Afghans are ready to take the, the, mm. the, the responsibility of the security of their country as soon as, as they can, but we need your help. Ambassador, thank you very much. Somber news from Baghdad tonight. A body believed to be that of a British hostage has been passed to the authorities in Iraq. 
Downing Street says urgent efforts are being made to establish identity. Five British men were abducted in Baghdad in 2007. The bodies of two of the men, security guards Jason Swindlehurst and Jason Creswell, 